Hi, I'm Lana Taco from Spartan Controls, and today I'm going to be giving you a quick overview on how to mount a Fisher spring and diaphragm actuator. Your first step is to prepare your valve and actuator. I'm going to do this by removing my yoke lock nut, my stem connecting block, and installing my stem nuts and indicator disc. Your next step is to make sure your actuator is in the fully up position. In this case, I have an air to open actuator, so I'm going to put my irregulated 35 PSI on it now. If you have an air to close actuator, skip this step. You're next going to place your yoke lock nut on your yoke and then lift your actuator onto your valve making sure you don't damage your bonnet threads or your stem threads. <clears throat> your next step is to line up your actuator and tighten down your yoke lock nut. And I'll be tightening mine down with a hammer and chisel. With your valve plug in its fully seated position, you'll now line up your indicator disc with your travel scale. And then pry up on your valve stem, moving the valve to its fully rated travel position. With the valve now in its fully open position, you'll move your stem nuts out of the way so you can install your connecting block. Being very careful not to cross thread. With that in place and fitting nicely, I will now put my connecting block bolts in and tighten them down. With your connecting block fully tightened, you'll now turn your stem nuts up and tighten them tight against your connecting block. And then you're gonna line up your travel scale and tighten it down. Lastly, with everything lined up and tightened, we'll remove our air supply and ensure our valve moves its rated travel. And that completes our overview of how to mount a Fisher spring and diaphragm actuator onto a standard Fisher valve. Thanks for watching.